I need, uh, toss me that Bible up here. There are, you know, these are wonderful, but they don't have the same effect. You know, you know this book. <laughs> I couldn't do that with this. Do you know this book, Holy Bible, this book is filled with great stories and things we would, li we would like to do. You know, who doesn't want to be a giant slayer and slay the giants in your life? the diseases or the children or the finances or the, the, you know, those Goliaths that come against us. We all want to be a giant slayer, you know, or, you know, have the courage of the three Hebrews to be able to, you know, make the proclamation, Yo, you know what, our God, he might not save us, but we're not going to bow. Having that courage, and even Daniel's courage, that when there's a law made, that you cannot pray, that he doesn't even go secretly. He still prays openly the way he always did. What courage, don't we? We want that courage, you know, or we want to be able to make the proclamation of Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Don't we all want that? Isn't that we, we pick up that book and we just, I want to be like this. I want Yahweh, make me like this. I want to be able to do like Job, and I want to be able to be like Daniel. I want to be like David. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. And you miss all the pages in between that tell you how to be. Because you know what this is? An instruction manual. It's what it is. An instruction manual. Now, there's a new show on TV. I haven't seen it. I told William I think he would love it because that's what they do, right? They give you the instruction manual on how to do something, like fly an airplane. And just by the instruction manual, you got to go do it. Now, I, I mean, cars come with manuals. I don't know that you could drive a car by reading that manual. But this is the new show. But this is an instruction manual. It, all these things we aspire to be, this will tell us how to do it. We don't like those pages. We don't like, now my favorite one, and you hear me quote it all the time in Corinthians when Paul talks about, be ye not deceived. This is who is not in the kingdom, which some of you were. So there's not fornicators, liars, effeminate, you know, that whole list. If that's instruction. See, if this is how you are, if this is who you are, you're not in the kingdom. I didn't say that. The, the, the book said it. But we like to skip over instructions, but I want to look at an instruction chapter. Psalms 37. You, you want to have the courage of the Hebrews or Daniel. You want to have... Be able to make the proclamation of Job. You want to be like David. <coughs> then we have to follow the instructions. See, Yahweh is not the genie in the bottle. There's been a few messages, starting with Sister Nice, about reverence. You know, he's not, oh, I'm in trouble. Let me go rub the, you know, and Yahweh, I want this. Yahweh, I need that. There's an instruction book that says Yahweh is more than willing, and we know he's able to do whatever you ask. But he doesn't do it for just anybody. You got to be in relationship. Psalms 37 starts off with, this is a psalm 
of David. So this is David. Not all the Psalms were written by David, but this is one of David's Psalms. First instruction, fret not. That seems pretty easy, right? Fret not. Now, this doesn't mean be fearful. You know, don't be afraid. This means become irritated. This is what this fret means. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Like, don't let evildoers irritate you. You get irritated by evildoers. You know, you watch the news and you get... When is Yahweh going to do something? You get all irate. That's what he's saying. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. But don't stop there. And you're going to see a lot of this too thing. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. So he's telling you right off the bat, here is what you need to do. Instruction one. Don't let the evil people in the world get you irritated or make you jealous. Well, but he doesn't stop there. See, this is the wonderful thing of Yahweh. He want, you, you want to know, but why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Guess what? Ain't your problem. Here today, gone tomorrow. Why will you let them take you to a place you got no business? So either way, whether they're making you fret or whether they're making you jealous, because, you know, the wicked seem to have everything. Everything seems to go for the wicked. You know, why is the wicked, you know, always winning the lottery and they're always, good fortune's always finding them. And I mean, even David did it. He was the king. Why the wicked prosper? The mystery of the world. Yahweh says, don't be concerned about it. Guess what? They're here today, gone tomorrow. Next instruction. Trust in Yahweh. So we're done with the evildoers. So now we're going to turn our focus to Yahweh. And we're going to trust in him. And, and, see, it's not enough to just trust in Yahweh. And do good. See, if you trust in Yahweh, it's going to show by your deeds. So it shouldn't be, oh, now I got to make, I got to do good. It should, like, flow out of you because you trust in Yahweh. So, see, there's another reason for this. He, he doesn't, like, tell you to do something without explanation. Isn't Yahweh wonderful? Because I don't know as a parent, because I said so. Why? Why? Because I said so. Boy, the Bible would be full of that. Yahweh doesn't t- treat us like that. Trust in Yahweh and do good. And if you follow this rule, this instruction, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. So you'll have a place to live and food. I think Yahshua said that too. Seek ye the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, And all these things, which he had just talked about, food, shelter, and clothing, shall be added unto you. Next instruction. Delight thyself also in Yahweh. Why are we miserable? We must not be trusting It says, delight thyself in Yahweh, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Don't have your desires, and maybe you're not delighting yourself in Yahweh. Want something from Yahweh? Delight yourself in him. See, there's a way to get this stuff. 
You just have to do it his way. There's instructions that go with the getting. Commit thy way unto Yahweh. Trust also in him. Oh, he repeated that trust thing. And he shall bring it to pass. So you want something to come to pass. You want the things to do well and go well in your life. You have to forget about the evil folk. You need to trust in Yahweh and do the will of Yahweh, the good works. Delight yourself in him. Commit your way unto him. And you're going to have the desires of your heart. And he'll bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light and thy judgment as the noonday. We're not going to be. We'll be exposed. Like it won't be in secret. Yahweh will reward us openly. (coughs) Rest. Oh, we need to learn how to do this. We don't know how to rest. We don't. Rest in Yahweh. This is instruction. Now, this is a command from Yahweh that you are to rest in him. Rest in him. And wait patiently for him. Uh, We don't. We want Yahweh to do things when we want things done because, of course, we understand that this needed to be done yesterday. He doesn't understand that. You know, I needed this yesterday. You know, I wish Sister Debbie was here because she, she, her testimony about that. She got a little spoiled in her youth, you know, walking in the power of Yahweh and getting everything, bam, bam. And then all of a sudden, cease and desist. And she got tired of waiting and didn't understand why I got to wait. Because Yahweh said so right there. He said, rest in him and wait patiently for him. So he's kind of like telling us, like, while you're resting, that's like waiting. You do it patiently. Like he's telling you how to do it, you you know, not with the murmuring and the complaining. I don't understand why Yahweh doesn't he know. I don't understand why can't he. He knows I need this. I don't understand. You know, the grumbling and the complaining, that's not how we wait and rest in him. We're supposed to do it patiently. Fret not thyself because of him who prospers in his ways. He's repeating again. So obviously this is an area we have trouble with. You know, the person that's prospering in his way because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. You know, again, we're looking at them wicked man, getting a little jealous or irritated because he has what I don't, and I'm the good one. I should have that. Cease from anger. I've met a lot of Yahweh's people that just can't let go of the past. You know, bitterness and and stuff is, you know, there's a reason uh, Yahshua talks to us about forgiveness and knowing how to forgive and let stuff go and, and, you know, because it's a bondage thing. And then if you leave that anger fester, it turns into, the scripture calls it roots of bitterness. So it might have been a little seed of anger, but it begins to grow roots. And the roots he calls bitterness. And, you know, it just festers and this plant is, and people that are like that, you don't want to be around them. They're negative and, and nasty and got nothing nice to say about nothing. And it's just horrible. Well, cease from anger. Let it go. And forsake wrath. Like, you know, just let it all go. It's all good. It's all good for that part. 
if you're resting in Yahweh, if you're committed your way to him, if you're delighting yourself in him, if you're trusting in him. See, it, it's a, a work that I don't have to, it's like I'm going through it like a checklist, but if I trust in the Lord and do good and delight thyself also in Yahweh and commit my way unto him, the rest of the stuff is going to happen. I'm going to find myself resting in him. I don't have to like, oh, I need to rest. It's going to happen because I've committed my way to him. I'm trusting him. I delight in him. He is my pleasure. He's my source of delight. And then the rest of it happens. When I see the wicked prospering, I know the word to them. And, and, and I'm not uh, irritated and I'm not uh, jealous I'm actually should be a little bit compassionate and concerned that they're here today and gone tomorrow. And that if they don't get themselves right with Yahweh, they're, they're lost. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. So, you know, stay away from evil thinking. That's, see, anger and wrath cause you to plot vengeance and think evil stuff. And so that's why that's with that. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Anger and wrath will take you there. You know, jealousy, that all that stuff that he's telling us to stay away from will take us to places of evil. And then he goes on and tells us why. And now this is not just about evildoers out there. This is connected to you need to cease from anger and forsake wrath before you fall into a place of evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon Yahweh, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou, they, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth. Ah, oh, Yeshua said the same thing. And shall delight thyself in the abundance of peace. Yeshua said the same thing. The wicked plots against the just. Don't we know that? And gnashes upon him with his teeth. Evil's always out there. Whether it's coming through us through flesh or it's the devil himself trying to, because of temptation to us, he's constantly gnawing at us that would be the gnashing at us with teeth gnawing at us trying to get us ensnared and entrapped and uh, where our thought process turns he says Yahweh shall laugh at him for he sees that his day is coming now I always see I, I don't like those scriptures when Yahweh talks about laughing at somebody I don't know if anybody's ever you know had you found such a place in, in yourself that when you saw the wicked thing, whatever it was, coming at you, you just laughed at it. Like, this is a joke. And I mean, really, like, laughed at it. It was like a joke. I've been there physically with somebody who, I, you know, back in the day, I could have stomped in the ground, and they were threatening me. I, I just laughed. I thought it was funny. Like, you got to be kidding me. This is hilarious. But spiritually, one time, I mean, the devil was on me, on me, on me, on me. I get home. I'm putting the key in the door. And it just, this is funny. Because I see him everywhere he is. Everywhere he's trying to come. You know, I, I had arrived at a good place. And now he's trying to do something else. And it was funny. I'm like, this is hilarious. But I don't want Yahweh to do that to me. You know, the scripture talks about Yahweh laughing at people's calamity. When I'm in trouble, I do not want Yahweh laughing at me. I want him to help me. But if I'm not in a right place, he might start laughing at my calamity, like, ha, ha, look what you did. I tried to tell you, but look what you did. 
I don't know how many times did I tell you not to. Ha ha, look at what you did. Okay, help me. I got no help for you. I, if you would have listened, all the help was there. But I don't like it when the scripture says that Yahweh laughs. Because I, I don't want to be that. Yahweh will laugh at him. I don't want him laughing at me. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as to be up of upright conversation. And again, we see this. We see it physically. We feel it spiritually. Their sword shall enter into their own hearts and their bows shall be broken. So this is all the reason why we don't need to fret about the evildoer. We need to make sure we're, we don't fall into being an evildoer, but we don't need to fret or be jealous of the evildoer. Yahweh just said right there that vengeance is his. That's what he said. He said their short sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. He said, vengeance is mine. It's not your problem. You know, we're fretting and worrying about stuff. You know, we need to let all this stuff go. Our God is all of that. He really is. You know, maybe we haven't got testimonies like Job or been cast into the furnace fire and come out like the three Hebrews or been put in a lion's den for praying and stood there like, you know, wow, look at the lions. Aren't they friendly? You know, slept with lady. We slept together, you know. No problem. We might not have those types of testimonies, you know, and maybe we haven't had even that kind of a life where we've seen such a mighty, mighty hand of Yahweh. But that doesn't mean Yahweh is not mighty. These are the testimonies. What's in the book are testimonies. That's Daniel's testimony. And he stood up on testimony day and said, let me tell you. What the king did, he made some decree, and I laughed at it because I said, I'm praying to my God. And I did, and they came after me, and they did, he did just what he said, and him and I was close. I was a little surprised that he really put me in that lion's den. But let me tell you what happened when I went in there. I was afraid because I thought them lions was going to get me, but I looked at them, and they just looked different. And they paced like cats do and laid down and went to sleep. So, so did I. I figured Yahweh got that. Or we do like the three Hebrews. Yeah, you know what? Yahweh hasn't delivered everybody. Some people have gone to death. But that's all right. It's worth it. It's worth it. We choose death. We choose to die for our God. Now they had, they was convinced, sold out, fully persuaded. And that's all you got to be. You don't have to necessarily have Yahweh had done exactly the same thing for you. But what he's done for others, he will do for you. He's not a respecter of persons. But you got to be like them. And how were they? They were committing their ways unto Yahweh. They were trusting. They were delighting in him, in Yahweh. And when there are times of trouble, when the enemy drew out the sword against them, their sword entered into their own hearts because vengeance is his. A little that a righteous man hath. Now, this we got to get this one, too. <coughs> a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. Now, we got the concept. 
you know, I got it in my head. You want to win that lottery? Wouldn't it be nice? Are you content with the little that you got? Do you know that the little that you got is better than Gates' it's millions of dollars? I don't know if the Rockefeller still got up there on the list. You know. Do you know that what you got is better? It's better. Stop looking for more. Now, I'm not talking about goals and aspiration. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, getting a promotion at work and, you know, getting your education and having that kind of stuff. I'm talking about you can't be content where you are because you want that. Then this is what he's talking about right here. You need to get content with where you're at because what you have, what a righteous, it's not what, I'm, what a righteous man has, what makes the righteous man different from the wicked man? Yahweh. I have Yahweh. That's what makes the difference. So what I have is better. Is Yahweh better than having all the lands and the golds and the wealth and all the hoopla and the fame and the fortune? I got to believe that, and I got to walk that out. Stop looking for something down the road. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken. See, he gives that little warning. He says, don't do that. You know, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arm of the wicked shall be broken. See, the wicked has this end. Don't look at them. Don't be jealous. Don't want what they have because their end isn't the end that you want. So he's constantly telling us what their end is. So you don't envy them. Don't want want what they have because their end is not good for the arms of the wicked shall be broken but Yahweh upholds the righteous so even when we're falling we're falling into his arms Yahweh knows the days of the upright means he's ordered our steps And their inheritance shall be forever. It's an everlasting inheritance. Even Yeshua taught, he taught the same stuff. See, this is what we got to, you know, forget about this division thing, old and new. Yeshua taught the same stuff when he talked about our inheritance. (coughs) You know, their inheritance shall be forever. We have an everlasting, what's coming for us is everlasting. Lay up your treasures in heaven where their moth and and rust doth not corrupt it. You know, can't be spoiled. Why? Because it's forever. It's an eternal inheritance. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. So when the evil time comes, guess who's not being ashamed? And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Yahweh will find a way to take care of his people. Now, hopefully, we will not be like Israel. And though they got manna every day, they didn't like it. You know, hopefully, we won't, we'll, we'll have learned our lesson, and we won't grumble for birds, you know, and we won't grumble and complain. We'll be happy with the food that we're getting when everything else around us is perishing. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of Yahweh shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume, and to smoke shall they consume away. The wicked borrows and pays not again, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. So if you're righteous, you have to be merciful and generous. Okay, I'll leave that one alone. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they shall be cursed of him shall be cut off. 
Now here we go back into some instructions. The steps of a good man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in his ways. The steps of a good man are ordered of Yahweh. Yahweh is ordering the steps of the righteous. And he delights in his way. And we don't complain about the way that Yahweh decided for us to go. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For Yahweh upholds him with his hand. This is a repeat. It's a repeat. He just said that. This is a repeat. For Yahweh upholds him with his hand. So even though we might stumble, we might fall, we can be cast down. You know, whether it's physically or spiritually, Yahweh upholds him with his own hand. I have been young, this is David, and now am old. I like this because I, I can say that. I have been young and now am old. Durr. Okay. I'm not old yet, but I'm older. Yet, I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Now, I haven't been all, I have not traveled all over the world, and I have not known thousands of people. But I, what I have seen is this. I've never seen the people of Yahweh in want, you know, debt in certain you might want a 60-inch TV, and you might want a 2013 car or whatever. I'm talking about want of food and you know, being destitute to that place, that Yahweh has always taken care of his people. And we see it through this testament, through this testimony of saints, of the testimony of Yahweh's people. Even when they were in rebellion, Yahweh took care of them. Even when they fell and they were cast down, Yahweh never removed his hand from them. We have, it's written right here. It's right here written. So even though I may not personally be able to testify to that, I'm connected to the people who have the testimony. I'm connected to them, and their God is my God. Therefore, I can make the proclamation that I have been young and now am old, yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed, his offspring, his children, their grandchildren, great-grandchildren, big and bread. He is ever merciful. Now, we can stop there and stay there. We need to tell each other that all the time, especially when we're in our states of trying to figure out what is going on. How do I, as Sister Ina, how did I get here? He is yet ever merciful and lends and his seed is blessed. Instruction, depart from evil and do good. Oh, I think we were told that before too. Trust in Yahweh and do good. Depart from evil and do good. And guess what will happen? And dwell forevermore. Depart from evil, do good. See, it's not enough to... Uh, just not do evil, like just like I'm not doing anything evil. That I can't go through my life like this. I have to do good. You can't just stop living and say, okay, as long as I sit right here, I won't do any evil. You have to do good. For Yahweh loves judgment and forsakes not his saints. They are preserved forever. 
but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. He's constantly reminding us. Choose you this day because look what's going to happen. The righteous forevermore, seed of the wicked cut off, burnt, broken arms. I mean, he th- they, there's a lot of stuff. Happening. Their sword's going to enter their own heart. Their bows are going to be broken. I mean, there's <laughs> a lot of not so good stuff happening to the wicked folk. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. See, all the stuff to us is forever, forever. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. I should not hear any foolish stuff coming out of the saints of Yahweh. Because he said the righteous, the mouth of the righteous speak wisdom. And that should let all the young folk know, too. A lot of wisdom up in here. Y'all should be listening to us. And his tongue talks of judgment. See, we not only speak wisdom, but we talk about judgment. So you best watch what you're doing or else. That's what we say all the time. Do good or else. I mean, we phrase it all kind of different ways. But that's what the righteous people speak. It's not like I'm trying to speak. That's what righteous folks speak. Wisdom and judgment. You can't help it. The mouth of the righteous speak wisdom and his tongue talks of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. Oh, this is David in the book of Psalms. I guess he had a glimpse of the future. Maybe he read Jeremiah. Was Jeremiah after him? Yeah. (laughs) So he's prophetic. The law of his God is in his heart. Now, if you were in today's lesson, you know that the spirit of Yahweh is essential to take anything that we talk about the feast and all, to bring it from being something external to being something internal, which is where the change happens. So you can make your flesh behave itself, but you can't make your mind change. But the spirit of Yahweh has the power to do that. It has the power to do that. So the law of his God is in his heart through the spirit The Spirit comes and does what? Writes the law on our hearts. None of his steps shall slide. Why? Because Yahweh said up there, he's ordering your steps. If he's ordering your steps, they're not going to slide. You're going to be right where you need to be. The wicked watches the righteous and seeks to slay him. I think we feel that one. Yahweh will not leave him in his hand, though, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on Yahweh and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. When the wicked are gotten rid of, you'll see it. Now, we're not supposed to rejoice over that. But it's okay. I have seen the wicked in great power. Remember, this is David. I have seen the wicked in great power. Those that have some years and know of world history can attest to this as well. I have seen the wicked in great power and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away. And lo, he was not. See, it might look like they're flourishing. You know, let's do some history. Let's, the most wicked person I could say, Hitler. Okay. Look like he's flourishing and conquering and, and doing, but Here today, gone tomorrow, he passed away, and he was not. Yea, I sought him, 
but he could not be found. He was gone. Now, here's some instruction we need to do, but especially the young people. Mark the perfect man. People that are serving Yahweh in your midst, pay attention. Mark them. Like, that's a saint of Yahweh. And behold the upright. Just watch them. See them. For the end of that man is peace. So what we need to do, those of us that are older, that the young may be marking, we got to make sure that we are in peace. Because that's what Yahweh is telling them. Watch them and see their life of peace. You know, how they delight in Yahweh, how they've committed their ways into Yahweh. And stuff may be happening to them, but they're content. And they're, they can rejoice. They're not caught up in the circumstances of life. They have a focus that's beyond that. But the transgressor shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of Yahweh. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And Yahweh shall help them and deliver them. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust him. See, you want, see, this is what we want. We want our salvation. We want, his, he is the, uh, we want him to be our strength in a time of trouble. We want us to help him, us when we're, and deliver us. And he shall deliver them from the wicked and save us because we trust him. And if we trust in him, we're going to do all the other things of the chapter. And this is just one of several chapters, several writings of instructions that will tell you how to have contentment, how to have peace, how to have joy, how to have Yahweh working in your life where we can have the, where we can have the testimonies of Daniel and the three Hebrews and of David. And we can stand and say how the giants in our life just fell with one stone. You know, I, I picked up five, but I only needed one because Yahweh guided that rock. You know, I wasn't sure. And then there are some teachings that say, well, Goliath had some brothers. So just in case they decided to come after me, I was prepared. But it only took one. It only took Yahweh. You need to be able to stand and make their professions. See, that's the greater part to me is their professions. You know, David's profession when he's talking to Saul, and he's like, I can't wear this armor, you know. And it's like, well, you can't go out to battle. Well, yeah, yeah but I, I fought a bear. I fought a lion. And Goliath ain't no different. That profession. And then when he faces the giant who's downplaying him, oh, they done sent a boy out to me with a stick and some stones. What's he going to do? I mean, Goliath's probably like six feet taller than him, probably buffed. You know, David's this little skinny, scrawny. I, no, I, maybe not real scrawny because I think shepherd work is a little work. So he probably got a little stuff going on. But he's young, you know, he's, and, you know, he's not intimidated. He said, oh, well, let me tell you what. Yahweh said, this day, you're in my hands now. I want to make those kinds of statements. I want to be like Job. And though everything around me is falling apart, and I'm like, Yahweh, I don't understand what the heck is going on, but you know what? You could kill me, but I'm still going to trust you. That's where I want to be. I want to be able to make their proclamations. I don't need the same circumstances. I want to have their confidence in their God. I have the same God. Do you have the same God? 
If we have the same God, we should be able to make the same proclamations because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And should he choose to slay me, I want to still trust him because I want the reward of the righteous. That's what I want. And Yahweh told me how to get that. So I want their profession. I know I'm going to have to go through stuff to get their profession. But I want it. And I want to trust in him. And I want to do good. And I want to delight myself in him. And I want to commit my way, my life unto him. I want to rest. I want to find peace in him. I don't... (laughs) I don't want to look at the wicked and be jealous or have them take me to a place of anger and, and, you know, because it's easy to do that because there's a lot of, I mean, especially when we look at the injustices done to children and stuff, it can make you irate. But Yahweh's saying, don't worry about that. Vengeance is his. And so we just need to Know that our God is all that. He really is. You know, if you don't have your own testimonies, read this. Read this because it's our, the same God. And this is their testimony about how good our God is. Amen.